if you run out of hand sanitizer, can you use contact cleaner? I mean, your hands are your point of contact, right? Hey, what's happening, guys? You know what? Today, I got started on a project. It's, it's nothing difficult. It's got an Uno, a DHT11, and a, uh, an OLED, but the OLED's too small. My eyes are getting too bad, so I wanted to switch to a, a 16x2 LCD. And I thought, oh, just the thought of wiring all that up makes my head hurt. I don't want to do it. And I thought, wait a minute. Somewhere in a drawer, somewhere, I've got that Seed Studio, Seed Studio uh, Grove Sensor Starter Kit, which I think had a 16x2 LCD in it. So I went to looking, and I found it. I did a, a review on this, I don't know, last year sometime, I think. I love these things. I don't really use them. So what you've got are your different sensors. Um, what we got here? This is just a buzzer. But the beauty of it is, I'm just going to sit it here, and then we'll zoom in. Whoop. Instead of having to wire it up, I mean, you still have to wire it up, obviously. But in still, instead of having to, uh, you know, get your DuPont wires and all that out, you just use these nice little four-wire connectors that are actually, you know, they're keyed even, so you can't plug them in wrong. And you can plug this into uh, an Arduino board, or this kit actually came with the uh, Seed Studio Lotus, which is basically just an Arduino with uh, those Grove connectors on it. This is this is what is called, I guess, modular prototyping. Now, I, d I wouldn't want to use this for a finished project, but to just get something going, I think it's great. So, yeah, here is the uh, 16 by 2 LCD, and what you can see here is SDSCL. It's I squared C. Oh, happy day! Four wires instead of what 16, and then we have the uh, DHT sensor that goes with it, and here is that uh, Seed Studio Lotus board, which, like I said, has a uh, one, one of these two is the Atmel. Let's see. Let's see how good this old camera is. Can we get a focus? Okay, no, that is the USB driver. So that would be our Atmel, right? I'll be able to see this better when I... Yeah, that's the Atmel. So that's basically an Arduino Uno. And then we have all these nice little things. We plug in... Uses a micro USB for power. And... In a couple of seconds... It looks good here. I know it doesn't look good on camera. Maybe if I kill these overheads there you can see it better so I mean this really really makes it easy to quick quickly prototype a project like this I should be using these all the time now granted they are more expensive than your uh, you know your basic sensors like this DHT11 here I think you can get these for like 68 cents one of these probably costs you a buck or two because you know there's, there's more stuff going on to it but if you're setting up a lot of projects quickly or you just like playing around this is an easy way to whip stuff together see how it works and then uh, you know you can put something together right, let's uh, take a look at the code for this it's pretty simple Okay, let's have a look at the code here for this little demo we've whipped up. And I will paste a link down below to the code which is available on Pastebin so you can download it. No worries, you don't have to copy it up of here. 
So we're going to need two libraries. We're going to use the DHT library for the temperature sensor and we're going to need the RGB LCD library. I will again post links to both of those down below in case you don't have them. Now we need to tell uh, the software and the board where to find the DHT. In this case it's going to be on digital pin 2 and we know what type it is. It's what 10, 11 and 21 or something like that. Three different types. This is a type 11. Then we need to assign it a name. We're going to call it uh, DHT. And DHT will go with DHT as you can see here from the library. And it gets set up with its pin and its type. You could just as easily do uh, DHT Bonzo 2 comma 11. That would work just as well. And it would actually save you, you know, what, a few bytes if you're tight on uh, space. Next we need to assign a name to the LCD screen. Our LGB LCD, we're calling it LCD. Again, you could call it Francis if you wanted. It doesn't care. It just needs a unique identifier. Now we're going to do our setup. And the setup in this case is super simple. DHT begin. Start taking the temperature. LCD begin and we need to tell it um, how many columns, 16, and how many rows. Then we're going to wait for two seconds. I mean that's that's just a common thing to do. You don't have to do it. I, I would recommend waiting at least a half a second so you could put 500 in there just make sure everything gets set up. Then we're going to go to the main loop which is the part of the program that keeps repeating itself. We're going to create an integer which means you know whole numbers variable called H for our humidity and we will populate that variable by reading from the DHT sensor the value read humidity. We'll create another interval integer variable called T for temperature getting it from the DHT sensor in the field called read temperature. Then we're going to print them out to the screen. We're going to start with where, 00, zero the upper left corner. Then we're going to print a title called temperature. Then we'll reset our position and we'll print our value for T, which we got right here under read temperature. Then we're going to tell it to go over to uh, position 14 and put character number 223 and if you look over here I put this here for you that is the degrees symbol in the ASCII table then we're going to drop down to the next line we're going to print humidity we're going to move over to the 10th spot we're going to print the variable H which you can find right here H that is our read humidity value then we're going to move over to line 12 or column 12 and we're going to print out that percent symbol because humidity is in relative percentage and that's it super simple I did it you can do it so again the link to that code will be there on pastebin now we could take this even further you know say we get out a uh, another set of wires here And then we can plug them into, let's say, D3. And then we can add to that a buzzer. Just using the buzzer as an example. You could easily do a relay here. Then adjust our code so that if either the temperature or humidity is out of range, it sets off a buzzer clicks off relay. If you guys want to see that, let me know and we'll make a new video doing that. But I just wanted to show you this really easy way to do rapid modular prototyping with the Arduino and save yourself the joy of wiring. Well, if you like wiring, yeah, wire it up. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed this little video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you for watching. Washy, washy your hands. Don't touch your face. That's it. I'm out. Peace. 
I want to thank you all for watching and spending time with me today. Uh, a community like this is uh, something that we can all be very proud of. So again, thank you very much for all your support of Learn Electronics. Uh, please feel free to check out the Patreon page. A dollar a month is all I ask and uh, really helps keep the channel alive. We also have an Amazon shop where you can buy most of the items that you see on here. And there's a link to it down below.